Hi everyone, I am Linda Welbrock, the founder and CEO of Leading Women Entrepreneurs and the Force for Change Awards. And we have a remarkable honoree here with us today. I can't wait to share her story on how she is a force for change with her company. She is the founder and CEO of Sudara and her name is Shannon Keith. Welcome Shannon and congratulations on being a 2021 honoree. Thank you, Linda. It's so good to be here. And I feel so honored to be amongst the ranks of some really amazing people doing good things in the world. So thank you for having me. Well, your work is certainly making a major impact globally. Let's talk about what Sudara is and what you offer. I love it. That's my favorite question. So Sudara is really a brand that has two branches. We have a nonprofit and a for-profit um, benefit, certified benefit corporation. And we are a social business that's all about tackling one of the hardest issues in the world, and that is helping women out of sex trafficking. And we do this through skills training and job placement, and revenues uh, for those programs are created through a beautiful line of pajamas and loungewear that we sell on the internet and in some boutiques, um, mostly for women, but we definitely have a line of, uh, of children's and men's too. So covering the whole family in really um, comfy clothes, that's all about freedom. Okay, so again, just so impressed with everything that you're doing. I'd love for you to describe and define how you define social enterprise and how you're using Sudara and your business as a force for good. Yeah, so we basically define social enterprise is using business in a way that helps solve problems that you care about, whether it's for people, planet, um, all of the above, and as a certified benefit corporation, so we're actually a for-profit entity, Sudara Inc. On that side, we spun out of a nonprofit, so we do have a 501c3 nonprofit arm, but those are two separate entities with separate bank accounts, but with a singular focus to help the women. So the nonprofit can help with wraparound services and all of the things a woman would need to be able to actualize a job opportunity. So if she's a, a vulnerable um, single mom, you know, she needs scholarships for her kids. Um, we primarily focus in India where sex trafficking is at the, the worst and the highest rates and, and just sheer numbers. And so public education isn't free, right? So there's lots of wraparound services that the nonprofit does. Um, so when that woman is on her road to kind of health and, and wholeness and has safety and a safe place to live and nutrition and all of that, then a job opportunity where she can have dignified work, self-sustaining income to break the cycle of poverty, to provide for herself and her children in ways where she doesn't have to choose to sell her body for survival. Um, that's where the business comes in. And it is a business. It's, you know, we're creating beautiful products, products that the market and people love that are created by the hands of amazing women. Um, the revenues for those kick off into job training programs that have about 10 to 12 different vocational training options. Because as you can imagine, not every woman at risk or a survivor of sex trafficking wants to be a seamstress. Uh, women are unique individuals with a variety of interests and skill sets and aptitude. And so there are about um, 10 to 12 different options that women can choose from. And so the products that we sell, uh, mostly here in the US, but hopefully soon to be around the world, that's this virtuous cycle of beautiful products that people know and love that create the revenues to train the women. And then there's a 90% job placement. So you can be trained in a skill and still be unemployed and that's not really helpful. So um, the outcomes are what we are looking for and that's really sustainable job uh, creation for the long term so that women are no longer vulnerable to, to oppression and to poverty. Again, so inspiring to hear this whole entire ecosystem that you've created around this very tragic problem. Mm. Um, so thank you for, for what you've done and what you've created and for all the many lives that, that you are going to help. Um, we would define you as a socialpreneur. And uh, I, I believe that being a socialpreneur has some really satisfying moments and then some really challenging moments. Um, could you tell me a little bit about both sides of that coin? Yes, absolutely. So being a socialpreneur, a social entrepreneur in business is very satisfying in that 
you know, no longer did I have to sort of, you know, check all of my kind of humanitarian and my activism at the door when I went to work and do that on, on my spare time or in the margins. And I could really marry my passions with my skill set and business. And to use both of those together where, where nothing is wasted just feels like such a whole and integrated life. And to be able to not only provide that for me, but for our team and, and anyone else who wants to work on behalf to provide that for customers um, and really all the stakeholders all through the value chain. So it, 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 yes, it's the women that we serve and their children and that's our mission, but it is the employees, it's the customers, it's all of us working together because we all have a part to play in making this work. And so that collaboration and that teamwork is also equally just as satisfying because, you know, I believe as human beings, we really are um, you know, community <laughs> beings were created and we live and thrive in community, not in isolation. And so working for a greater good and a greater purpose is, is super satisfying and in collaboration with our amazing partners in India. Um, so it's just been wonderful to learn from them, their culture, their amazing food <laughs> and textiles. It's, it's been so rewarding. The flip side of that is it's pretty complex to, to, to have all those stakeholders and to do all of the things, um, you know, to raise funds, to run a business, um, to create products, to, to do, you know, digital marketing. There's been so many hard things along the way. Um, so many times you think you're doing something good that people will, will want to help you and just have wind to your back. And that's not always the case. Um, you know, it's it's harder to be a socialpreneur in my mind because you not only have to do all the things that everyone else does in traditional business, but you have all of the burden and the mission um, and and doing it right. And, you know, it's more expensive to do things right. And yet sometimes the market doesn't bear a more expensive price point. So there's always kind of the flip side. But. What I will say, what I've learned over in the 16 years of doing this is that it's always worth the extra effort. Well, I can't it's imagine. Worth it. It's always worth it. <laughs> you know, the, the extra effort and the, the stories that you must have seen firsthand and the people that you have helped and the legacy that you are creating to make this world a better place than uh, when we left it, I think is, is worth any of the challenges, and we certainly applaud you. Um, so tell us a little bit more about what you have learned and what you wish other people knew um, as you built a company that is, in our words, a force for change, but um, in many ways, it's a business that's a force for doing good. Thank you. There have been, and I just want to say, Linda, your kind words are so appreciated, and I humbly accept them on behalf of kind of all of the stakeholders in the Sudara community, right? It's definitely, I get to be the spokeswoman here and kind of a mouthpiece and a representation of our larger Sudara family and community, but it really is not me. You know, it's it's the team, it's the customers, it's our advisors, it's people who donate, it's certainly the women and children in India and our partners there. So thank you so much. I'm just always super humbled to be on the receiving end of, um, of such kindness and recognition for the really hard work <laughs> that we're doing. Um, so, you know, learnings that I've had along the way is that collaboration is everything. It is so counterintuitive to kind of the American way of rugged individualism and just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you can do it and all of that. And I just think that um, our problems that we're facing in the world today are too big and too complex for any one group or individual or organization or even country to think that they could do it alone. It really is um, about collaborating and bringing your unique um, as an individual, you know, we I bring my unique gift set to the team. Um, and I also have a lot of weaknesses, right? And warts and struggles. But on a good balanced team, there are other people, other amazing teammates who whose strengths backfill my weaknesses and vice versa. So, and all of that um, does not happen if one person or one team or one organization thinks that they're the silver bullet or they have it all together. It really takes collaboration. My, that's probably my biggest learning and my biggest joy. It is a little bit harder. 
it's a little bit messier to have to get, you know, consensus and buy in. It takes longer. Um, but at the end of the day, when we are more concerned about long term outcomes and real life transformation and really moving the needle and not just having, I think, what are known as, you know, vanity metrics, not just throwing money at things and patting ourselves on the back and saying, hey, look how good we are. Um, you know, it's not about us at the end of the day. It's about working together to solve a problem. So just like we can't solve climate change, uh, one organization, one country, we need to do it as a planet. Um, when we have these big, huge social injustices um, and, and inequities and inequalities and racism and, you know, all of these big, huge problems that we're seeing, we have to collaborate. And that's been my learning. That's the way you get things done. Working in, in your unique space and we all have something to offer and we all have a value that we can add to the whole. But I like to say, you know, at Sudara, we are one link in, in a long chain um, of restoration and of healing and of opportunities towards the better world that we're trying to create together. So we want to do our part. We want to be a strong chain. We want to be a reliable chain uh, link. And, and we want to be part of something so much bigger than ourselves. And it really is through that collaborative spirit, that lens in which we view everything, how we, we view our customers, um, how we view our supply chain, our vendors, um, all across the board. I think it's it's all about collaboration and working together. Well, that was beautifully said. And I hope that you know all of our viewers listen to your message here because gone are the days of um, compete and conquer. And I'm a true believer in collaborating and compassionate leadership. And I think now we're moving into a very special time in uh, in society where you know, we have evolved to this point and we know that we, we are all one. So um, I hope that, you know, you just continue to rise and elevate with your impactful mission. We can't wait to celebrate you as a true force for change. And uh, we will see you on November 8th. Congratulations, Shannon. Thank you so much. I couldn't agree with you more. We, we are at a time and a moment and, and we can do this, right? We can work together. So thank you so much. I'm, I'm so happy to be, uh, to be part of this amazing movement that you've started, Linda. Absolutely.